situation plus USA because of the curve that it moves. So it's all timing. So that means you can have a house that may suffer a lot. One day you become a good house. You may have a very prominent house, suddenly it may go down the tube. A good example is like uh, Parkdale. About 100 some odd years ago, there was very prominent, lots of wealthy people there. And then at one point in time, all the homeless moved there and robberies and something that really drove it down. Now the life cycle is coming back up again. And now it's becoming the movie center of Toronto, Hollywood North. So things change. So timing is very important. And what about shapes? Shapes are very physical. When you do feng shui, you have to first look at the shapes. Now, the shapes would involve the environment, the big shapes. That would include a country and all the way down to a city and the surroundings. And actually, uh, two months ago, I did a whole bunch of feng shui in Trinidad. Okay, I, I spent about three days there. Actually, total four days, but three days really work. Half a day to play, that's it. And then I was in Belize, designing a new resort in Belize. And then I was in Jamaica again about a month ago, and to help out a company that's about bankruptcy. So I went there to save their lives, to bring the business back up to par. So things like this, how you manipulate the energy around them and turn around the situation to save them from Right. And similarly, uh, a couple of months ago, when Citibank was in big trouble, they sent the senior vice president to come and see me twice from New York. And we sat down for hours in my office in Richmond Hill, and I actually prescribed the medicine, how to save Citibank. So today, Citibank is still up and alive, because they're following my advice. So things like that, it can work, because you can pinpoint the timing of things and ask them to change certain things around to turn around situations. Now, but in terms of building, it's very interesting because we're talking about longhouse. Hakka people love to live in longhouses. But just in case the professor before me didn't say clearly, uh, I can tell you there are two kinds of people in China that I regard personally to be the toughest. These are survivors. They will go anywhere in the world and succeed. They are the Hakka people and the Chao Chao people. And together they make up the wealthiest people in China. Believe that or not, they're everywhere. Amazing. In fact, the wealthiest people in Hong Kong are either Chao Chao people or Hakka people. Amazing. So never look down on them.